I'm Mike Quackenbush, this is Till We Make It, and I'd like to share with you a snippet from a very recent online seminar I did when I was asked about the protagonist in a company's narrative that was losing steam and needed to find new audience engagement. And that gave me an excuse to talk about the importance of character arcs. A well-crafted character who must function as a protagonist, that is to say, they're the main character of a story. And if you are the babyface champion of a company, there's a good chance you are the protagonist. A protagonist must go on an arc, a character arc. When there is no arc, the character will become stale. And that's what we want to counter as we answer this question, right? How do we keep a babyface's title run exciting after a long feud? So part of the answer is, and I'm just talking storytelling and character right now, is that the character must go on an arc. They start here, they go on an adventure that challenges them, and they learn something so that when the arc is over, they have changed. They cannot be the same character they were here at the start. This is... Joseph, uh, Joseph Campbell, this is the hero with a thousand faces. This is monomyth to an extent. Um, a readily understood example. Luke Skywalker in the very first Star Wars movie, A New Hope. From where he is at the very beginning of the movie, right? He's a farm boy on Tatooine. He's helping Uncle Owen. Uh, he's listless. He wishes that he could go on an adventure. And then adventure presents itself. Hey, you want to go and do this thing? It might mean leaving your home world behind. You want to go out there and you want to fight the Empire? Well, you're going to go on this crazy adventure. By the end of that movie, Luke Skywalker is dramatically different than he is at the beginning. He is no longer this listless farm boy. When you, when you watch any really great movie, you will watch the protagonist go on an arc. They start somewhere, they end somewhere else, they've learned something in the process, and they have changed. You need to devise that for your babyface protagonist. Whatever thing they're about to go through next forces them to change. They might change for the better. They might change for the worse. They might be more convicted of the character's integrity. Maybe they are considering a flip of the dynamic. Could they start as a babyface, but ultimately feel like maybe they should turn heel. But they need to go through that transformation. When there is no growth and no change, there's no character arc, and that's when you stagnate. So to drop back down into wrestling from broad storytelling for a moment, because you can apply that to really any character in wrestling, right? You have to make sure that the next story you embark on challenges the character, teaches them a lesson, and they change. At the end of the, whatever that next story is, that next feud, that next three-beat program, the audience must watch them change. They have to understand how the character went from here, but ended up over here. It has to be presented in a way that the audience can digest and understand the character's journey. And when they go on that journey, guess what? They make an emotional investment in the character. And that's what you want. You don't want them to give up on the character by the end. If you need to keep your title run exciting as a babyface, you gotta go on an arc, you gotta learn a lesson, and you have to be changed by the experience. That is character arc. A couple years ago, there was a great story. I think it was in the kind of a raggy paper USA Today, which is like everywhere here in the United States. You get it at Starbucks. I don't know if it gets international circulation. It's not exactly one of the most well-respected newspapers in our country. Nevertheless, USA Today did a great piece on the best and the worst written characters on television at that time. Uh, the reason I know this is because they had a big picture of John Cena, and I thought, I'm going to read that article. The article put forth the argument that the best written characters on TV at that time were the cast of Bob's Burgers, an animated show, because each of them goes through character arcs every season. They learn something, and they are changed by the end of the season. And... They also added this. They felt that the worst written character on television was John Cena because he never changes. He never learns anything. He's the same character every week for 10 years in a row. 
if a heel sets a trap and he walks right into it and he gets beat up or whatever, John Cena never learns anything. He's the dumbest character on television. That was the argument put forth. That gave me a real insight into the fact that sometimes we imagine that wrestling is some kind of other form of storytelling that the general rules and principles of good storytelling don't apply to wrestling. And that just isn't true. That's not true at all. The more we can follow the kind of examples that are set by the best movies and the most critically acclaimed television shows and the comic books that make us come back month and month again to revisit the adventures of our favorite heroes and villains, they are seductive for a reason. Because those stories and those characters are gripping and we become attached to them. Even the characters on the printed page of a graphic novel are two-dimensional in nature, but they feel like our friends. We believe in them and we go on those adventures with them. In many ways, those characters are much better developed than a lot of wrestling characters who are inhabited by real human beings. So consider that. If you have any hand in structuring that arc, great. Make sure you really challenge the character, the character learns something, and at the end the character is different in some appreciable way. You must be able to articulate that. Imagine that you have an exit promo at the end of the program where you explain exactly what you learned and exactly how it's changed you. And the end of that might be, it's made you decide you're going to be a heel. Maybe. That's one of many, many outcomes. But I think that's the one that we most easily latch onto as wrestlers. You know, I thought I could be this. I thought I could be this kind of champion. But this match taught me something. This is who I need to be instead. And this is the change that's happened as a result.